right, everyone. Uh, we want to welcome you guys to the um, Zoom about Grandview Complete, GB Complete. Um, we've got a bunch of information for you, and um, Megan is running our chat on the side here. So if you guys could um, hop into the chat and make sure that we get your name and your email address and we will get you that you mark, uh, marked as you are, have attended um, our Zoom today. Um, and we can get you some more information following the Zoom as well. Um, Megan is also going to put a couple of different links in the chat. She's gonna put one. Um, we have an information sheet, information sheet. So if you are a junior or below, you can fill out an information sheet and get information um, from us. She's also going to throw in an application. If you have not applied to Grandview, it is free to apply online. So we will go ahead and um, put a link for our online application in there as well. And then our last thing that we're going to put is that we are doing in-person visits. So if you and your family would like to come to campus um, and meet with us, we are more than happy to do that. Um, and there will be a link in there that you can set up a visit. Uh, we do visits Monday through Friday from um, 9 until 3 p.m. So all of those are going in there. Um, don't forget to, to hop in the chat and put your information as well. Um, and we can um, get everyone marked correctly. All right, again, well, welcome. My name is Tina Miranda. I am one of our freshmen, um, our first year student, uh, admissions counselors. I work with students from Southwest Iowa. I also work with students from Ankeny and Johnston here in the Des Moines metro area. Um, and then I work with the majority of our out of state students uh, as well. So welcome. Megan, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Megan Bradley. I am a first year admissions counselor as well. I work with Northwestern Iowa, a couple of the feeder schools within Des Moines um, suburbs, as well as Minnesota students. Awesome. Beth Carlson is our expert today. So Beth, could you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Beth Carlson. I'm director of the GV Complete program. And Maddie, what about you? Hi, guys. My name is Maddie. I am a sophomore here at Grandview, so I'm a student. I'm studying nursing, and I also have a Spanish minor, and I use GV Complete, too, and I love it, so... Awesome. Thank you. We're going to hand this over to Beth. Um, she's going to talk a little bit about the GV Complete program. If you guys have questions as we go through, please throw them. You can either um, private message me um, or Megan, and then um, we will we'll get those up. Or if you're free, if you are comfortable in, um, with putting your question in the chat, you are welcome to put it in the chat too. So either one of those work. Keep those questions coming as we kind of go through the um, the presentation and um, and afterwards as well. All right, there you go, Beth. Great, thanks, Tina. Um, I thought I would start with giving a little bit of, of an overview of our program because it is something that is unique to Grandview. And I'm really grateful that Maddie was able to take the time today to share her perspective as a student because obviously the program um, is very much designed to empower and to accompany students through their journey um, here at Grandview. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you um, to give you a little bit of a visual. Okay, so we started this program, um, gosh, about six years ago now, and it was really designed to help accompany students through their full journey to graduation. Um, we felt that students that um, financial aid has changed a lot over the years. You as parents, if you went to school, may um, discover that it's gotten a little bit more complicated. And so um, even those of us in the business have to um, really pay attention and keep up on the different changes. And so we felt that um, it's not, we don't want the, um, the transactional part of what you need to maintain the, the financial side and your path to graduation to be a barrier. And what we found is that the stress of trying to figure out how to keep on top of deadlines and what does this form mean and how do I decide whether I want a subsidized or an unsubsidized loan or both um, could kind of overwhelm families sometimes. And um, so we just felt like we needed to do a better job of helping um, walk alongside, present you with some good information, um, interpret terms or um, expectations, and then you you still are in the driver's seat, you still make the decisions. Um, 
And one of the biggest challenges with that is that uh, higher ed is sort of rolled out one semester or one year at a time. Um, when you file the FAFSA, uh, you receive information for that year. It's tied to taxes for one year. Um, however, when students go into repayment for loans, you're, you're paying back your loans for your whole career. And so um, if you do that one semester or one year at a time, uh, you might be signing up for loans and not really understand um, how much it would be to go into repayment or what other options might be available to you. And so obviously in order to do that, um, we need to know how much it's going to cost each year to project beyond one year. And so that's what we started when we put together the GV Complete program is um, giving the opportunity to plan beyond just one year at a time. And in order to do that, we need to know what those costs are. And so our board of directors has committed to students in the program that your increases each year will be capped at two and a half percent. So if historically we've been going up about three and a half to four percent each year, keeping it at two and a half percent will save you money on tuition, room, and board, and it allows us to commit to you exactly what your costs are going to be each year based on choice of where you're going to live or what meal plan you're going to have. Um, so in order to, to um, do that planning, we uh, set up the other, I guess, perk of the program is that you'll have a, a coach, a completion coach that works with you and your family throughout um, the time that you're at Grandview. And so you'll have one-on-one -on -one opportunity to sit down and um, uh, ask questions, uh, revise plans, those kinds of things. You have a lot of personalized attention at Grandview overall. Um, you, you, if you're going through the admissions process, are used to being partnered with an admission counselor like Tina or Megan, and we continue that relationship through your time at Grandview. Obviously, our financial aid office is phenomenal. Our business office is great, and we work very closely with both of those offices as well. Um, but we're, we have the ability of actually having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you because all of the, all students are assigned to one completion coach. And so in order to start the process, um, we will uh, invite you to do a one-on-one -on -one meeting. And I'll give you a little bit more details on that too. Again, as we're talking about kind of the overview of the program, um, I mentioned the two and a half percent cap on your increases um, will also help you to lay out a plan so that when you see what, if any, remaining balance you have after all the financial aid has been applied, we can run different scenarios. So you might want to look at uh, what if I don't take out student loans? How much would I need to pay each semester? Or if I take out my student loans and wanted to make monthly payments, what would that look like and how would I go about that? So that's where we do some planning as far as it goes. The other thing is, is that obviously uh, the student's time to graduation um, is very much intersected with the cost. And so we help with the academic planning side as well. Um, obviously, if students are able to graduate in four years, um, as opposed to four and a half or five years, that's going to save you money um, that, you know, you would be spending for tuition, maybe taking out loans, you could be out earning money or continuing your graduate school. And so we want to give you that information on the front end. So you know what it's going to what what your path to graduation is going to look like. Maybe you've taken um, uh, post-secondary credits in high school and that might you know, advance you by a semester. And so the way that we do that is we're actually partnered with all of the first year seminars and um, our all first year students take a seminar. They're small sized classes, 20 students or less. They're taught by a, a professor. And then we come into the class um, and teach students how to use our planning software, help them explore what they might wanna major in if they don't know what their intended major area is and then also serve as their academic advisor for that first year. So we help them register for classes and, um, and then project out over the time, um, what, how much time it's gonna take to graduate. Okay, so wh what starts the process? How, how do you begin this whole journey? Um, 
it really begins with the financial aid process. So um, as many of you know, the, the FAFSA window to file the federal FAFSA opened up at the beginning of October for the next school year. And so if you've already filed that, um, it's probably in process with us. If not, I would encourage you to do that as soon as you're able to. Um, and what happens is then our financial aid office will send you or your son or daughter um, a financial aid award letter. And that means that all, all the information that we know at this point has been factored into the financial aid process. Now, this is your first version of the financial aid award and it may change. You may um, receive additional scholarships later on and then you'd get a revision to your financial aid award. But as long as you have that first iteration, then we can start to talk about um, what your options are. So once you receive the, fi the financial aid award, which the first letter is a paper uh, financial aid award letter, um, and it has quite a bit of information in it, we'll reach out to you, your admissions counselors will reach out to you, our contact information will be included in that letter to set up about a 45 minute to an hour conversation to start the financial planning process. And this happens whether or not you're committed to Grandview. You don't, you, you can find out and clarify those costs before you have to commit because we want you to understand what, what we're offering. And so in your financial aid award letter, you're going to get a copy of this, um, the sample kind of overview with your financial aid numbers factored in there that you can see on the screen where it says welcome to GB complete. Now, this is just kind of taking the numbers out of a financial, your financial aid award and putting them in a four year plan. The, the next step and the part, the advantage of sitting down with one of us is that then we will talk through it and talk about kind of how you're envisioning the financing going for college. So that's going to be the first step. And then we'll sit down either in person if we're able to or via Zoom um, and create a personalized plan where, where we can lay out all the costs, explain all the fees, and then um, not only uh, help you understand what, what loans are, and especially for you students, um, this is probably the first time you've gone into that kind of a financial arrangement. And so understanding what happens when you um, sign your master promissory note and that, that it, it will roll out throughout your time. I think one of the fears students um, have shared with me is that they're afraid if they take out a loan that they're suddenly on the hook for the whole career and you take it out one year at a time. So each step will touch base with you and say, okay, now if you take out this loan, this is what your payments are gonna look like when you graduate. So that you really have some clear information before you do that. So um, we can run different scenarios. You know, you may want to see what it looks like with a student living on campus or living at home. You may wanna see what it looks like with or without loan um, with different payment options. So we'll, we'll start the process as soon as we can um, once you receive your financial aid award. We have a team of seven of us who do these meetings and you're, uh, you'll be par partnered with your completion coach once you've committed to Grandview and um, start the orientation and registration process. And so until then, you'll, you'll work with one of us more generally on, on starting your planning process. Um, I do many of those initial meetings. A couple of my other colleagues do many of those initial meetings. And so we take copious notes and we'll um, email and send stuff back and forth with you um, to begin that process. But then probably in May or June, you'll find out who your completion coach is going to be throughout your time. Um, he or she will be working to get you registered for classes, make sure we have all your transcripts in and are crediting all the classes that you may have taken, placement exams to make sure that you get into the right level of English and math and um, sort of beginning your journey in that way. As far as then revisiting a plan, if you started one before, or starting the process on the financial planning. Um, I kind of think of June as, as student loan month. That's when you'll probably be finalizing decisions about whether or not um, you're gonna take out the loan. So we can always circle back or um, clarify that process. If you wanna set up a payment plan, those often start in July. So again, we'll be clarifying that um, in May and June. So it's, it's just open communication back and forth. And then once you have your completion coach, that's who you'll work with throughout your time at Grandview. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to pause there and see if you have any questions. Um, or maybe before we do questions, I'm going to ask Maddie to just share a little bit about her journey and um, and maybe some of the um, perks of the program as you see it, Maddie. Yeah, so my completion coach is Lori, and she is so helpful, and I'm sure all the other coaches are super helpful too, but um, coming into like my freshman year um, of college, my family and I were worried like, oh my gosh, you know, this is a private school. How much is it going to cost? And Lori was so helpful at like reassuring us that, you know, there are resources available if like that financial burden is too much or something like that. So she was really helpful with that. And then also um, registering for classes my freshman year um, was super, super helpful too. I was worried that like I wasn't going to get into the right classes and everything like that. So she's helpful with that. And then also the um, four-year plan um, that Beth was talking about with um, like in your uh, freshman seminar is super helpful. So I already have like first semester here at Greenview, I had my four-year plan all figured out. So I knew exactly what classes I was going to be taking all four years at Greenview every semester. And so that was really helpful for me when um, it came time to register for classes for my sophomore year. I already had it planned out and I didn't need to figure out, oh, I have to take this class and this class for my major. I already had it planned out and I made sure all the criteria were met in order for me to graduate in four years and all of the stuff like that. So that's super helpful. And yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just all, all around helpful. I don't know why people wouldn't do GV Complete because it's something that Greenview offers and it's just um, really helpful for students and their families as well. Thank you, Maddie. And I, I would also say you obviously were a um, pretty on top of it student, kind of knew what you wanted to study already. And sometimes that can be intimidating, um, but everybody's on a journey. So you may decide to add a, a minor um, at some point or want to know what it would look like um, to double major, or I just don't even know what I want to major in, or one of the things with the completion planning that is really helpful is it helps a student envision what what does it look like? I've always thought I wanted to major in business, but what does it really look like? What kinds of classes will I be taking and what does that mean? I had a student who I worked with a couple of years ago who came in wanting to do computer science. And through that journey of planning out his computer science classes and seeing how, what that would look like, he came to me uh, at the like, probably in November and said, okay, I just can't sit down that much. <laughs> He's a very energetic student. He's like, I just can't picture myself sitting at a computer. And, and when I really laid it all out, I realized that um, that wasn't going to work for me. So now he's elementary education and going to graduate. And so, um, you know, I, I think just by kind of seeing the reality of what it all looks like, I, you know, I, I've always wanted to be a nurse, but wow, now I realize how much science that is. Um, or, or, or whatever the plan is. It just really um, kind of helps um, make it real. And yet you still have the ability to change it and, and, to, um, and to ask questions. And uh, we also are very happy to pass, not pass students, but connect students with the actual departments. So if a student comes in and they have, you know, kind of a vision of, well, this was kind of what I was thinking I wanted to do. Um, we are generalists. We know how to get students started in the different fields and how to make sure that they get our general education requirements accomplished. Um, but we also want to connect the students with our specialists, with our, advi our faculty advisors and um, faculties in the di different departments. And so we'll also connect them to, to have those good conversations about, well, this is kind of what I was thinking, but I is that doable? Can I can I make that work? And and then also with the timing of, of how that would play out. Many of our students are also student athletes. And so they're looking at things like eligibility and how, you know, how am I going to redshirt or how long am I going to be here? And so in, in many ways, the GV Complete program is a connector. Um, we may not know all of the answers, but we know who you can talk to to figure it out. And so we'll connect you as a student with different people on campus proactively and then also um, sort of reactively. If you get in and uh, to a, a point where you're 
uh, in over your head. You you feel like you need a tutor. Either you know you're going to need a tutor and you need to set it up ahead of time, or you're getting in over your head and you you really want to um, uh, connect with somebody. Uh, we'll, we can make that happen. Um, if you uh, need um, to be connected to disability services or to uh, counseling services, any of those kinds of things, um, because we get to know you and because we care about you, we um, are, are available to kind of help navigate any of those kinds of things that might be going on. And right now, this year with COVID, it's a really interesting time to be partnering with our, with our students. I have to say, I am so impressed with students and also with you high school students who are, are making this work and navigating it too, because um, our students are just being really, um, um, they have a lot of grit and creativity and, and making it work, kind of understanding this isn't a lifelong thing, that this is something that we need to get through at this point. And, and again, we're here to cheer you on or to help um, uh, direct traffic if need be. Um, and then also it's really emotional and scary on the financial side, right? Many families have experienced a, a change in their financial circumstances. And uh, you know, you filed the FAFSA and everything looked great based on taxes a year over a year ago, and now things have changed. And not even knowing how to how to broach that or who to talk to, again, we can help with that. I wish we had a pot of money that we could give out, um, but we can we can kind of coach you on conversations to have and good questions to ask of the financial aid office or how to um, seek out scholarships, things like that. Um, and then also talking through your different options for, for the remaining balance, um, taking into consideration um, your family circumstances. So it's definitely not a one size fits all kind of a situation. Every family is different. And so we can help you uh, figure it out for your own family. Okay, Megan and Tina, did I miss anything kind of in the overview there that you can think of? All right, does anybody have any questions? I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see faces. One of the things I think is um, so amazing about this GV Complete program um, is that you have that extra connection with your completion coach. Maddie kind of touched on it and, and um, has that already made a connection, you know, with someone right away when you're coming into orientation and you are meeting with your completion coach and, and getting that done um, and, and kind of walking with them throughout their whole time at Grandview. Um, I think that's one of the best things. They'll see you through completion at Grandview, which I love. So yes. all right. I know you guys have some questions <laughs> here. Please go ahead. Um, you can either send them directly to Megan or I, um, or uh, drop them in the chat as well. How do you start this one-on-one -on -one process? Good question. So when you receive your financial aid award, which I believe they're going to be sending those out beginning in December. So once you filed the FAFSA and get that financial aid award, you could call me, email me, you'll probably get an invitation. I, I think an email goes out with um, a link to, to contact us to set that up. And then depending on how you wanna do it, if you wanna do it in person or um, online, and we'll, we'll go ahead and set that up. Good question. We have a question in the chat. Um, my son is interested in being part of the Air Force ROTC program. Is that offered through Grandview? So yes, we do have Army and Air Force ROTC. They would take the take classes here at Grandview, but we do partner with Iowa State um, for the ROTC program. Iowa State and Drake, I think, are the two that we partner with. Um, but no, the classes would be um, at Grandview. And they can do that simultaneous, simultaneously. Were you asking about being an athlete as well? Oh, an athlete, yep. Do you know, Tina, how that works? Um, we have had students do it. I mean, I think just peer involvement um, in anything um, in ROTC would work. Uh, you just need to make sure that you're able to juggle all of that. Good question for the coach too, depending upon which um, sport it is.
It looks like we had another one of if there's any prerequisites for the nursing program. Um, the prerequisites for how the nursing program works, you'll actually um, do those within your first year here on campus. Um, you'll enter in as a pre-nursing major um, and you'll accomplish those prerequisites such as um, statistics, bio, microbiology, um, and a couple other ones as well. And so you'll do all of those within your first year. Um, we do have all of the classes um, for our nursing major on our website. So if you are looking at taking classes in high school um, and doing those dual credits, um, check that. And then if you wanna get a little bit ahead, those would be good ones to um, check off a little bit early. The ones I would stay away from um, while you do that is anything that is like a nursing class at another college. Um, those probably won't transfer in. Uh, CNN um, stuff does not transfer in either. So try to stick to those more general biology, chemistry, um, statistic courses. Maddie, do you have any advice for pre-nursing students? Yeah, I would also say, um, what other class? Oh, um, I think that there, isn't there an English class, Megan, that's required? Yep, composition, um, one yeah. and two are always good ones to take, um, as well as just some gen ed math courses. Those are gonna come in and complete the prerequisites for the uh, liberal arts side of things as well. Yeah, so I think I took like comp or something like that. And so that transferred, so that was a good one. And then I also took psychology and sociology. Mm -hmm. um, and so those were also good ones that transferred because like Megan was saying, like try not to take any like specific nursing classes, but all those other classes usually transfer. So that was helpful for me. And a lot of our students will uh, get a minor in psychology. And if you've already had the um, intro to psychology class that allows you to take those upper, upper classes sooner. And if you come in with no college credits as well, you still can complete your degree within that four years. Um, we're just giving hypotheticals of if you have the option to take some classes beforehand. Very good point. We have another question um, about how long does it take to receive a response back from FAFSA? Um, I'll give, I think the question you're asking um, is like kind of the timeline of everything. So as Beth noted, the um, FAFSA opened up October 1st of this year. So it is open for all of our seniors in high school. Um, if you're a junior, it'll open next year um, at, in October. And the when you fill out that FAFSA, um, you, in step six, you can put up to 10 different schools. In step six, you can put Grandview down. That electronically sends us your FAFSA. Our financial aid office just started pulling those FAFSAs in here um, last week, I believe. And they'll continue to do that um, from now on. We will start packaging and sending out our um, financial aid information to our seniors in December. So hopefully the beginning of December. Um, when you're filing that FAFSA, uh, you should immediately get a response back from FAFSA um, telling you what your EFC is. So the very last page of that FAFSA, when you click submit, it comes up with your EFC. That's the expected family contribution. Um, that number is, um, immediately given to you right after you submit FAFSA. Um, I have another question. When would be a good time to schedule a college visit? During the junior year or senior year? Question mark. So it is always a good time to schedule a visit. Um, we are, like I said, we are open for visits. Um, we also do Zoom visits too. Um, we suggest students go and visit some, some colleges during their um, junior year kind of go and, and get maybe your top five schools or so and visit them. You will um, have a feeling when you walk on the campus that you um, would love to go to. Uh, it's just kind of one of those things you get a feeling of, yeah, I think I can see myself here. I, I like this place. Um, so we definitely encourage students to visit anytime during their junior or senior year. I would add on to that. I completely agree. You definitely, once you visit a college, you know if it's right for you. I visited a few other colleges in Greenview, and when I came to Greenview, I immediately felt at home. Like once you visit, like you you just you just get that feeling, and you know that this is your college. So, and I'm also a tour guide, so you guys can come see me on campus. <laughs> yeah, Maddie will walk you around and show you show you all the good places to go. 
All right, do we have any other questions? These are all great questions, guys. It doesn't have to be GV complete related. We can answer other questions as well. One thing I'd say is um, it's, as I mentioned, this is this is a program that's unique to Grandview. And so it, it's been kind of hard for to get our minds around it in some ways, but um, it really is for the student. And sometimes I'll have parents who will say, I, can I come meet with you? Or can we just set up a meeting because we're going to be paying the bill? And even if that's the case, we still want the students to understand the investment that you're making. And, uh, and then also in many cases, the students are responsible for all or part of, of what the responsibility is. So we're gonna encourage, even with busy schedules and things like that, we're gonna encourage your son or daughter or you to um, be in that meeting with us and uh, to help create that plan to have that investment in the process. We had another question about ROTC scholarships. We um, do not give out ROTC scholarships, but we would accept any that you would be bringing in. I guess that's another uh, point to touch on um, and it kind of piggybacks off of the GV complete stuff. Um, we allow any of those outside scholarships to come into Grandview. So Beth mentioned that you may have a revised um, GV complete plan multiple times. Um, because some of those outside scholarships, those local scholarships, um, those are given away usually at the end of your senior year, um, and they can be applied before that first semester um, over the summer. They usually get applied. So that could change your GV complete plan, um, and then you'd be working with your completion coach to um, update that and, and get all that information in there as well, because we obviously want to bring that amount down as much as we possibly can. Yes, for that very, out of pocket. very happy to celebrate scholarships. <laughs> uh, question on dormitory furnishing should a what dormitory furnishing should a student bring with them other than linens, etc. Maddie, do you want to talk about all the stuff that you brought when you moved into campus? Yeah, sure. So um, bring all your sheets, your blankets, your pillows. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm trying to look around my room. Laundry basket, um, all your clothes, maybe some lamps. I feel like there's not a whole, there's not really like lamps. So like bring a lamp if you like things to be bright. Um, and just bring like personal stuff. Like, you know, if you want to bring pictures of your family, if you miss them, um, hang some signs up in your room, maybe some posters, something like that. Um, potentially a fan because sometimes it can get a little warm, especially like when you first move in in August and bring all your school supplies. <laughs> I almost forgot that when I moved in my freshman year, I almost forgot my backpack at home. So um, yeah, I would say that's about it. I don't know, I guess. And bring all your like soap and deodorant and all that stuff too. <laughs> the other thing I would note too with this is make sure you're, um, your student will get their um, contact with their roommate beforehand. So arrange um, who's bringing a mini fridge if you guys wanna bring that, TVs, microwaves, all of that is um, the student's responsibility to bring if they would like that, um, other, along with all the personal items that Maddie mentioned as well. I've got two college students in my house. And so I know this can be um, a challenge because you wanna make those plans early, but just to FYI, students probably won't get their housing until June. So even if you uh, send in your housing contract, you know, now um, our housing office uh, will, um, once everybody has sent that in, um, will match students up then. So if you have a, if you meet through the process or if you have a friend coming and you want a room together, you can request each other. Um, otherwise you'll, you'll fill out kind of a survey um, and, and get matched with a roommate that way. Um, but that, I know that that anticipation of wanting to know who it is happens earlier, but um, but that that's when you'll find out and and um, can can make those plans at that point. 
All right, another question for you, Maddie, um, regarding food service on campus, like the cafeteria, are they available 24 seven or do they have specific hours? They have specific hours. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not exactly sure when they open. I think, is it like 7, 7 a.m. till like 8.30 or 8 p.m.? I'm not exactly sure, but that's what I think it is. Um, and then I think they open just a little bit later on like Sunday mornings for brunch. But um, it's they have tons of options. They always have like pizza. You can always get a burger, a hot dog. You can always get like a salad. Um, there's always like cereal too. And then usually, I don't know if they are doing it right now because of COVID, but usually they have like a stir fry bar or a pasta bar for lunch or dinner. So that's good. And then in the mornings, you can get an omelet. So that's really good. And they have like um, waffles, pancakes, um, stuff like that. So they have tons of options. So if you're a picky eater, you are still bound to find something that you would like. So there's tons of options. And then we also have, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was gonna just mention the grab and go stations that we have as well. So um, our GV Express um, is open a little bit later. I believe it's open until nine o'clock on weekdays, um, which is pretty nice too. If they wanna just grab a bag of chips or a drink or anything like that, that's gonna be open a little bit later. But then we also have Einstein's Bagels on campus. Maddie, you wanna go explain what that one is a little bit? Yeah, that's what I was gonna talk about. So we have like Einstein's Bagels. And so with your meal plan, you get points. So one point is equal to $1. And so it's just on your um, student ID. So when you go to get a bagel or a coffee, you just scan your ID. So it's nice. You don't have to worry about carrying money around with you on campus. And um, it was nice for me. Like my freshman year, I had just like a weird like 45 minutes between classes in the morning. So I was able to just go hang out at the library and grab a bagel. So that was always a nice option too. And then they also have like salads and um, some other sandwiches and stuff like that too. Is there a limit, a daily limit on your meal plan on how much you can spend in the cafeteria? There is not. So um, we do an all access plan. So for the standard cafeteria, the buffet style cafeteria, um, there are a couple different all access plans for that. There's all access five, which is five days a week. Those would be the five work um, days. And then all access seven, which would cover the two week day, or weekend days as well. Um, so it's kind of up to them. They can go before class and grab a banana. They can come after and eat some lunch and then come back for dinner and they can come as many times as they want. Um, the points, they do get a certain amount of points per semester. They can always add more points onto their cards as well for those places like Einstein's and the grab and go station. Uh, but that one is a little bit different. I know when I was a student at Grandview way back when uh, they, a lot of students would have points left over at the end of the semester and buy bulk Gatorade from like the grab and go station just because they had the extra points. So you really rarely will run out of those. Whenever I have extra points at the end of the semester, I get like a dozen bagels and I take them home to my family because we don't have an Einstein's close to home. So that's always an option as well. Are you only allowed to use the points to purchase this, these items or can you use cash or credit? You can use cash or credit. Does anybody else have any questions? The other thing I guess I would say is that all students, all incoming first year students are invited to be a part of GV Complete. So it's not the kind of thing like, oops, I forgot to sign up for it. <laughs> We're definitely going to onboard you and, and reach out to you. So if that takes some of your worry, that's honestly one of the greatest perks of the program that I hear is that it's our job to keep track of some of those deadlines that as things get busy, We'll, we'll, we'll prod you or prod your student and say, okay, now's the time to redo your FAFSA for next year or to make sure you get this paperwork taken care of because we don't want you to miss out on anything. Um, a quick question. If a student has to commute for a partner program like ROTC at Iowa State, is it relatively easy or is traffic a factor 
that requires more time to plan. Um, Iowa State's about 45 minutes away um, from Grandview, but traffic is not a huge concern. It's pretty much a straight shot up. It is. I live just like 15 minutes away from Ames and it's a super easy drive. You never have to worry about traffic like at all. So it's an easy drive. What about parking on campus? Does every student have to pay for a parking spot and is that theirs or is it set up where you can have multiple students paying for that spot and it's first come first serve? So I believe if, um, with the parking passes, um, if you your student does bring a vehicle onto campus, they would pay a parking um, fee, which is I believe is eighty dollars. It could adjust, um, could have adjusted recently. Um, but with that, they would be able to um, park on campus. They would be assigned to a specific specific lot. Um, so there are a few different lots on campus. There's some that are right by the dorms, which are tend to be reserved from sophomores through seniors. And then there's a freshman lot as well. Um, most of the time they won't have any issues finding any parking spaces um, on campus. And there's always additional lots that um, will take that overflow as well. They just may not be right next to their dorms. Beth, what did you say the fee was? It's 84 each semester now. And then if you're commuting, it's 42. And there are some that are uh, dedicated to students that are commuting. And if you do not have a car or will not have a car on campus, you can have that fee waived. All right, this will be the last question and then we'll stick on if anybody else has any other additional questions. Um, do you know of any resources where students can look for scholarships? So first, Grandview has a bunch of different scholarships. So we have scholarships based upon what um, you, what you're involved in, what you want to be involved in at Grandview. So we have art and theater and music um, scholarships. We have some nursing scholarships, some things like that. Those are all on our Grandview website. Those are all application or audition based. And then we also have some scholarships based upon your academics during high school. So we have. Um, scholarships that we would be or that students would be receiving based upon their GPA um, and then ACT or SAT score and class rank. This year with the differences in um, taking the difficulty in taking an ACT or an SAT um, ACT or SAT test, we have removed that criteria and we're solely basing our academic scholarships on GPA. Megan just put a link in the chat um, to go right to our scholarship and grants page um, that can help answer some of those questions. But my biggest advice is to have those students apply for those local scholarships, those outside scholarships that um, can go to any institution. They don't, they aren't specific for um, Grandview um, or any other institution. They can be pretty much used anywhere. Your guidance office at school usually has a website or a binder or um, a stack somewhere of scholarships that you can apply for within your um, area, your hometown. Definitely, definitely use that resource um, of your, your school counselor. Um, and then we do put on our website any of those outside ones that we get as well. I would definitely re reiterate that about the local scholarships because you're a bigger fish in a smaller pond locally than some of those national scholarship searches. You always hear there are scholarships that students don't don't take and, and that's true, but I would say uh, more so I see students that are receiving a Dollars for Scholars or a Lions Club or something like that. It might just be for the first year, um, but if you kind of start the process early, um, sometimes uh, guidance offices now will send out kind of a monthly um, newsletter or something of here are the scholarships that are available now. Um, it, Honestly, students don't love to do it because it's more work, but um, I always encourage students to kind of craft an essay or an application that they um, um, overview of themselves that they feel good about. And then you can copy and paste it or tailor it for different applications and kind of um, challenge yourself to apply for as many as you can. And, and those um, might pay off better than than some of the, the general ones. And um, usually by April or May, those start to get um, 
uh, used up. <laughs> so again, that's something that that you can work on between now and you know the end of the school year. All right. Well, we will stick around. Um, the four of us will stick around if anyone has any other questions. Um, and we can even put you in a breakout room if someone has a specific question. So otherwise, thank you all for attending um, our GD Complete Zoom. And we will get um, all of the information from your students. Um, and then don't forget the links in the chat 